Hey, this is James Dam Schroeder from Portfolio Think Tank. Today, I'm going to show you how to take all these MEM stocks and all the stocks from Wall Street Bets and make an intelligent portfolio out of it. All right, check it out. First thing I'm doing, I'm, uh, I'm going to a site. I'm not going to Reddit, but I'm going to a site called SwaggyStocks.com. And here at SwaggyStocks.com, I head over to the, the left side. I pan down and I hit this Reddit sediment. <laughs> sentiment, pardon me. So on the, uh, on the sediment button, you can see all these different names here. And each of the names is tagged by basically how popular they are. That's like the number of posts, the number of comments. So what we want to do is we want to capture some of those most popular of the names, not go all in on like one stock, but let's just get a handful of them. I'm going to go ahead and just highlight here, dragging my mouse. I'm going to get the first six rows. So three across, that's 24 different stocks um, based on the, uh, the quantity of posts. I'm not sure what the time frame is here, but uh, um, probably doesn't matter too much. Now, next up, I'm going to head over to PortfolioThinkTank.com. At Portfolio Think Tank, I'm hitting the button to design and test a portfolio. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a portfolio strategy out of these 24 Wall Street bet stock names. All right, so this outlines a five-step process, and I'm going to go ahead and hit next, kind of get into the, the workflow here. And we're at this uh, first stage where we're personalizing the portfolio. And one of these options under the legacy positions is a place to uh, extract your, uh, your, your tickers. So we highlighted them from that page. I'm just going to put my mouse in there and paste them in there, hit the extract button. All right paste and I hit the extract button all right and we got them all loaded up into the uh, into the grid here now if you wanted to you could go in there and define certain weights for certain assets and G Spirit will go ahead and optimize the rest of them I'm gonna let this go carte blanc not touch anything let's see what the optimizer comes up with okay so We've got our assets in there. You could of course supplement that. Now we're going to go ahead and add our objective priorities. So you know, all portfolios have some kind of competing interests of things that we want them to do. Can't really have everything, but you can prioritize what you want. This is a pretty slick way of doing it. I'm going to go ahead and ratchet up the returns, dial down the current income. I'm going to go ahead and dial down taxes. I'm going to dial up diversification. Uh, I'm going to dial uh, down, minimize market exposure, down on consistency, and up on capital preservation. For risk capacity, I'm just going to set these uh, this way and click on to security forecasting. So no matter what stocks you put in the system, you have the opportunity to predict, select your own prediction models. And I'm going to prioritize uh, quantitative, fundamental, and then AI in that order. Go ahead and click next. This brings me to the portfolio optimization tab. And here we have a number of asset allocation templates. Um, what I'm doing here in, in an all stock portfolio, um, you know, isn't, you know, your typical stock bond blends and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to click the all asset button. This way it won't impose any kind of constraints. It's all a bunch of stocks. And uh, normally users would be adding these different themes here. Um, and we were constantly curating and updating these themes. But let's just let it, let it ride on the Wall Street bets and see what that can do as a standalone strategy. So I'm not going to select anything here. I am going to select a constraint. Uh, I don't want any position to be greater than 20%. I'm also going to add a threshold constraint, which means I don't want to um, I don't want to have any tiny positions. So I'm going to say if it, if it doesn't come up to like four percent of the portfolio, then forget about it. I don't want it in the strategy. All right, next we're setting our rebalancing and our reoptimization strategies. So for reoptimization, instead of just figuring this all out once and seeing how it did, 
We're going to go back in time, constantly re-optimizing this portfolio to come up with the optimal weights for what it would have been at that point in time, lock it in, and then we test the performance going forward. This does a pretty good job of insulating the, uh, the, the back test results from, from biases. There's still going to be a bit in there just because of our security selection process, but uh, this, will, this will do the very best that the, uh, that the system can do to get the biases out. I'm also going to put the, the reoptimization policy all the way down so it reoptimizes fast. It's all this Wall Street bet stuff, it's pretty fast moving. You want your portfolio optimization process to be attuned to that. So I set it down here to three months and uh, I'll just go ahead and turn that uh, rebalancing down too. Okay, uh, I'm clicking next on execution. And here I'll just select that uh, to have this uh, created in a new account. And here I'm clicking next. This is monitoring and risk management. So here we can select a uh, custom benchmark and then we could also choose what if any different notifications we want to come for different kinds of portfolio events just to make sure we're not missing anything and we're keeping attuned to what the strategy is doing in case we need to jump in there uh, and make some changes before the next reoptimization hits or something like that. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this one as it is for now. Hit the button to generate a back test. And here we're going to just put in our name and whoops. All right, I'm only going to back test this strategy for for say 3 years. You know, Wall Street bets hasn't been around too long and uh, it's constantly changing. Going back too far probably wouldn't be very relevant. Uh, three years is really even, even pushing it here, but uh, we'll go ahead and order it up now and let's see what we get. It's going to go ahead and send me over to our, our analytics page. On this page we've got a lot of analytics so you can really really make a pretty uh, clear decision about whether this is a good strategy or not and, and if it's not you can go fix it or go do something else or if it is we're going to put some money behind it. Okay. Here you can see the, uh, the, the 3D graphics so what we one thing that we, we did uh, we figured out how to um, measure portfolio diversification and we show it as 3D balance. So the more balanced that sphere is, the more balanced your portfolio is. Here we picked about, what, 24 different uh, Wall Street bet stocks. So I wouldn't expect it to be diversified. It's a little better than I expect, but uh, still room for, some, room for some improvement if we were to include you know, some, some alternatives or some, uh, some additional asset classes. <laughs> Look at this P&L though. Uh, it's pretty incredible. It's, uh, uh, you know, it starts at a hypothetical thousand dollars, and you can see how it uh, you know spikes. You know, geez, it's uh, uh, must have spiked almost thirty grand here. Here, the rest of the page is different analytics. You can see on the rolling allocation chart that we're, we're never settling into a one portfolio. We're constantly uh, reoptimizing the portfolio to pick up on all the different nuances of the dynamics of the securities, the evolving correlations, uh, the evolving forecasts of the assets uh, based on our prediction models, uh, and then uh, of course honoring those rebalancings and the constraints. So let's see how this portfolio uh, is situated right now. This diversification chart's uh, surprisingly good for uh, stocks you know, based out of one kind of common uh, sourcing, in this case of course, Wall Street bets. So, uh, you know, here's our positions. Uh, you know, it, 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 it picked up nine positions for us out of those 24. Um, you know, part of, part of a good optimization is it, it helps tell you what to invest in, but also what not to invest in. Sometimes more is less. Um, and that's even true of diversification. It's not just about quantity diversification. The hard part of diversification is getting assets that are going different directions at the same time. That's where your real diversification is. All right. So it looks like uh, AMC is our top position together with uh, Digital Turbine. Positions in uh, Tesla, Neo, Silver, Facebook, 
Disney, Apple, and AMD. Um, okay. So if you like this strategy, you know you can go ahead and, and, and put it into play. I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna just uh, zoom in on this uh, P and L. Let's just go back six months. We can get a better look at what's happening here. And the page has got a bunch of analytics, so you can play with it. Play with a bunch of different benchmarks. Um, all right. Yeah, you can see. Uh, I mean, the strategy did, did exceptionally well. It, it it doubled between the period of July 31st and then. Oh my gosh, it must have doubled. <laughs> well. I don't know, you can see this here, the portfolio return uh, on this period is 928% compared to the benchmark return of 3%. So, you know, obviously this is a uh, high risk, high return stuff, but you know, the whole nature of Wall Street bets, um, uh, you guys know what we're doing. So, anyway, this is a, a good way to do it. It's a good way to manage in your risks a bit. Um, you know, I want to check out one one of the things here about performance. Um, I'm wondering what that drawdown is on this. So I'm going to click on the performance metrics. Here's a risk tab. So <laughs> yeah, standard deviation 160 percent. Now almost all that is going to be upside deviation, which is why standard deviation is usually one of the worst risk stocks risk metrics to look at. But check this out. We did a we did a thousand percent on this with a thirty seven percent drawdown. Um, for anyone kind of in the hedge fund racket, uh, <laughs> sharp ratio uh, almost six, Sortino fifteen, Calmar twenty five. This is unheard of. Um, so you know maybe we're onto something with this. Of course, uh, you know another way of doing this is to put. You know, to splash the Wall Street bets, you know, mem stocks into a portfolio it doesn't have to be the whole portfolio, but obviously it's more than just what's happened in the last couple of weeks with GameStop. We're not even in GameStop here, and we, we, we've done some of this. Of course, I'm sure we, we, we've probably been in it from time to time here. Uh, yeah, we were. It was uh, it was in the portfolio at least through uh, October, but uh, and then we took a smaller position. Um, Took a smaller position in the fall year, uh, back down to about 15%. Uh, we rode that 15% position up, uh, you know, with some of the some of the gains there. But um, you know, seriously, seriously worth considering. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Uh, I'm going to be trying to do about like one or two of these a week. Uh, different kind of screens and strategies and just different ways to really really make the system work for you. Uh, please like it, please subscribe, and uh, you know, happy trading, happy investing. Cheers.